Okay, so this is video nine in the cycle cart frame build series. Uh, it's been about a month since I put the last video out and I've got a lot done. I think the frame is pretty much done uh, at the point where we can take it apart, paint parts, put it back together permanently. Um, so in the last month, I finalized the brakes. I got the brakes working. I got the throttle cables all hooked up. I got the motor installed, tires and wheels on it and took a first first drive, which I'll show you that in just a bit. Uh, pretty happy with the results. Uh, things came together really, really well. Um, I just to get the body mounted on the front and start making a tail section for this. So let me kind of show you where we are on the chassis. Okay, so we'll start at the front, working toward the back. You can see I've got some bracketry here to hold the uh, brake, uh, brake lines, rather. Uh, I'm gonna cut this part off. I'm just gonna do it after I take everything apart. Um, got the steering mount done. I got a bracket to hold the master cylinder. Uh, tie rods are on, spindles are on, front axle, everything's assembled. Um, previously I showed you the pedal assembly, but now it's installed. I did offset it to the right a little bit uh, because I've got this dead pedal over there. There's just a piece of one and a half by one and a half square tubing that I cut down for a dead pedal somewhere to put my left foot. And I built a throttle stop, which is what this is right here. So when the throttle goes forward, it can't go, go too far. It bumps. I guess the camera can't really see that. Um, it bumps right there. So that's adjustable. Uh, that's to keep you from overstretching your throttle cable. Uh, this is a piece of inch, uh, or excuse me, quarter inch round tubing that we bent and then threaded the end. And it goes back here. Excuse me, I'm trying to get my hand around everything. Um, and this is where the throttle cable attaches. Let me change the angle on that real quick. Okay, so this is the throttle attachment assembly. So the quarter inch rod comes back here. It's got a couple nuts on it to, to lock it in place. So this is adjustable front and back a little bit. Um, this is just a piece of one by three piece of scrap tubing uh, uh, from the frame rail. This is where your throttle cable hooks in. There's a little bracket here. Again, this is just a little bracket I made. Sorry, a little bracket I made from some piece of metals, uh, the uh, frame metal. Same thing with this right here. Get a better look at that. It's just holding my, my Clecos right now. It'll be riveted in place later. So when your throttle goes back and forth, just give it a good so it doesn't bind up. You can see what it looks like here. It's got a return spring right here. This is for the pedal return spring. There's another return spring on the motor for the throttle. Uh, the brake line is running along here. Uh, this is going to come up a little bit um, and be attached with rivets as well. It kind of runs all along the side. They both exit the back of the car. The same spot right here and this wire is the kill switch which will be mounted on the outside of the body so you can just reach out and uh, it's momentary off or momentary on actually I bought the wrong switch initially momentary off I thought it made sense but actually it's the opposite you want a momentary on so there's no contact between the wires until you press the button and that actually kills the motor I built this bracket for the steering column um, these I used on my last cart these bearings what these are are Swamp cooler bearings or vapor to cooler bearings. Um, they work really well. Um, the, um, that's what they look like right there. They can be offset a little bit, misaligned. You can see this one's lined up because I, I mounted this thing at a little bit of an angle. So it's got pretty good alignment. And it holds everything together really well. Very little play. I mean, there's a little bit of play, but you want to have a little bit of play so you don't have so much vibration through the chassis. Um, I've got a uh, metal bender, Harbor Freight floor mount metal bender I used for the first time. That's how I bent these tubings. It's not really designed to bend tubing. Um, you can see on this, I put little hash marks about every inch all the way around it so I can kind of keep track of where I'm bending. I just very, very slowly bent it, bent it, bent it, bent it, kept going around, kept going around and back and forth. And I just used a piece of plywood to make sure I got the right arch. So. That's the cockpit framing for the back seat back and then the mount for the steering wheel. So this way, this car can be completely driven without a body on it. That's the idea. So there's the gussets for the frame. Wheels are on and motors mounted. Uh, let me show you what the throttle setup looks like on this one. This throttle setup is from NR Racing. So this is not a stock throttle. If you've got a governor on your cart still, this won't work for you, but if you've taken the governor off, then this is the kind of throttle setup that works really well. And 
Yeah, so it's got return springs right here. I put two on it because I had a brake one time while we were racing and the engine revved and luckily the kill switch turns it off. So let me put the seat in it so you can see what that looks like. Well, actually, before you put the seat, I'm going to show you the, the floor. So you can see these ribs in the floor. We used a um, tool that John Rodewick has. He's a, one of our members here in Phoenix. It's just a bead roller. So we rolled some beads in this. Uh, it does tend to warp the metal a little bit, but the way this is working, once I rivet it all down, it will take all, the, all that warpage out. If you went all the way across, it would probably be... Oh, well, maybe it wouldn't warp quite as bad. But anyway, that's what I did. I just... These short ribs, they really stiffened up the floor. When I sat in it, it doesn't seem to flex nearly as much. And then I took the side panels. Instead of putting ribs in those, I decided to put louvers in it. So louvered, I forgot to count how many there are. There's a bunch of louvers down the side. Kind of give it that racy look. Uh, it'll kind of go with the body because it has a lot of louvers in it as well. I've seen this on Bugattis and all kinds of race cars and stuff. So let's put the seat in it. Uh, that's the seat out of my old cart. I'm just going to reuse it, I believe. I'm no sense in redoing it. And, um, yeah, so there's kind of a walk around of the chassis. I drove it for the first time, I think, two or three nights ago. And uh, drove it up and down the street. Made a couple circles. The turning radius is fantastic. Handles really, really well. Uh, the new spindle setup is working really well. This geometry, if you're building one of these, I recommend try to get the geometry right. You can see the angle of that um, kingpin, how it intersects. If you kind of draw a imaginary line down, you'll see it intersects the ground, right where the tire's at. And that's the idea of that. So I'm going to revise these slightly because I'm getting a little bit of binding. Just full disclosure, these are binding a little bit right here with the tire rod. So at full turn, this is, gets real tight. So I think what I, if you can see how much offset there is here, I think I need to change the angle of these to where they're more parallel. You can see if you look at it, if you were to draw a line across here, if this, is not, this isn't quite parallel either, but this is way out of parallel. Because I li basically aligned this up with the kingpin, which is probably not correct. I should have lined it up with the ground. There should be, if this was level with the ground, then this would be level with the ground. And as it turns, this angle actually increases. So because it almost goes completely level there. And when you turn it all the way in, when you turn it all the way out, it's really cantered out to the left. It creates more angle, which is what the, what the, um, what you, what you, what you want that to happen with the axle, but it's not necessarily a good thing where the tie rod connects. So I think I need to take these apart and readjust that angle, uh, which I'll make another video just for the spindles on that. But just for now, it does run and drive great. Um, very happy with it. So I'm gonna show you what the driving video looks like right now. So this is the very first baby voyage of the Viscount Vincent frame. Nothing's really super, super tight, but we're going to try it out. See how it goes. super easy. The uh, turning radius is probably five feet shorter than the previous chassis, so that's a big improvement for steering. Super smooth and easy. I'm going to do a little more testing later, but initial impressions, success, awesomeness. Very cool. Well, now that we've driven it with the chassis, this is what the body looks like on the cart. I just love how low and aggressive that looks in the front of that thing that the hood is almost level at the top of the wheels uh, hard to get a right angle on that but really happy with the way this is looking uh, boy, can't wait to build the tail section and get it all mounted up permanently so we're gonna call that the end of this video uh, series for the frame if I do another video it might be just to fix the spindles and maybe I'll do a video of the tail section assembly but this is looking pretty cool I'm really happy with the results of this 
Thanks for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. If it hopefully it's helpful to you and you're building your cycle cart. If you have any questions on cycle carts or what we're doing, how we're doing it, happy to help any way I can with parts list, frame designs, that sort of stuff. Um, again, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you can, if you like it. And follow us on Facebook, uh, Arizona Cycle Car Club. Have a great day.